I'll start my presentation. The title of this session is How to KYC in Line Pay. As you can guess from the title, this session is for sharing how KYC is carried out in Line Pay. But let me introduce myself first. My name is Nuri Beck. I am an Android developer working for the FinTech app dev team. I am in charge of developing for the pay service inside of the Line application and the Line Pay app, and I am mainly responsible for the KYC, including the eKYC and providing web app support. The session will go in this order. What is KYC? All about eKYC and Line Pay, review trend and future plans. So what is KYC? KYC is abbreviation of Know Your Customer, and it consists of two steps customer identification using document that identifies an individual and identity verification to verify that the person performing the verification is the same person. KYC is an essential process in financial services for when a customer creates an account or opens a bank account where fraudulent acts have to be minimized through customer identification. Also, KYC is a measure to prevent money laundering and for terrorism financing, so each country has a requirement set by the law. EKYC is short for electronic KYC and refers to KYC carried out electronically without an offline process. LimePay provides eKYC in addition to the existing bank linked KYC so that customers can verify themselves online. Now I will briefly explain LimePay's eKYC flow. When the user chooses the eKYC option from the Select a Self Verification Method page, several tasks are presented. Once the user completes all of the given task and therefore completes the application process, the application is either approved or rejected through a separate screening process and the, EK and the KYC process is completed only when the application is approved. I will explain the details of the flow while showing a demo of the most recent version of the eKYC. In LinePay settings page, click on Identity Verification and select the option to verify using a mobile phone and when the user agrees to terms of use, then the user will be directed to the eKYC guide page. A guide for each task is given and when the user clicks on Start, the first task they have to do is take a photo of your ID. When the user selects the type of ID they will be using for Identity Verification, the tasks start with taking a picture of the front side of the ID. Afterwards, the user will have to take a picture of the side and back of the ID. For the next task, the user will have to take a photo of their face from the front and another one involving face movement. Once this task is completed, for the last step, the user will enter their personal information. After checking the entered information once more, the application process is completed. After the user submits the application, the result of screening is sent as a line message. Were you able to get a good understanding of the KYC flow from the video? Now I'm going to explain the tasks in more detail one by one. As you saw in the video, the user has to take a front side and back side shot of the ID and they can select from the six types of ID provided as options. Taking a side shot of the ID is especially important in determining whether the ID is forged or falsified or not, and the ID has to be photographed so that the thickness of the ID, the user's face and address can all be checked. Next. 
the user has to take a front-facing photograph of themselves. The photograph face is compared to the face recognized on the ID card and the process is needed for identity verification and to verify whether the ID submitted belongs to the person applying for the identity verification. After taking a photo of the entire face, the user has to take photo of facial movement and I will start calling this step as liveness from now on. During liveness, two out of eight missions, including eyes, closed, rotate face, are randomly assigned. This task is used to determine that a real face, not a picture or video, is used for eKYC. Lastly, user's information is entered. Information includes the basic information such as name, date of birth, address, and also occupation, and the purpose of use of the Lime Pay account. LimePay's eKYC, which was implemented for the first time in May 2019, first used an external vendor's SDK. As you can see from the images captured on the screen, after entering personal information, the user would have to take a photo of their ID, take a photo of their face, and proceed to the live this step. And for the last part, the user has to record a video of themselves holding up their ID. The KYC implemented in the early stage was executed to satisfy the legal requirement of having both the identification check and self-verification, but due to the limitation that I will soon go into, were not able to give us a satisfactory result. The limitations we felt existed while providing the service for a year, we were able to improve it using Line Clova's AI technology. Among the many technologies Clova has, the improvement was made using Clova's character recognition technology, Clova OCR, and his face recognition technology, Clova Face. Let me share the key improvements that were made through a collaboration with Clova. First, identification, recognition, and verification function using Card Detector SDK and Clova OCR was added. In the external SDK that was previously used, only specific items set within the SDK was verified. So after the service was released, when we checked the actual data, we received a lot of screening application that used face photo or IDs that could not be used, which caused difficulties in the overall screening process. We were able to change the technology using the card detector SDK so that a photo would be taken automatically when the shape of a card is detected and when the photographed image is uploaded to the server using Clova OCR technology in the server, we checked the information written on the identification. So we were able to improve the system so that photo only showing the face and expired ID can, that were submitted but could not be used for a screening process can be filtered out in advance. The first image on the left is the screen the user would see when taking a photo of the front of their um, ID card using external SDK. In this case, the applicants were able to proceed to the next step by clicking OK even if they only took a picture of the picture on the ID card. But in the improved version, you can see on the right, as you can see, if the applicant takes picture of only the face on the ID card or uses an ID card in which the ID's expiration date is unverified, an error screen would be displayed so the applicant would have to retry and will be able to proceed to the next step only when all the submitted information is determined to be normal. Let me show you a sample of an application motion of card detector SDK used for ID validation. The client side sends the screen image and frame of the target detection area to the card detector. When the card shows Shows up in the target detection area, the SDK sends the detected card image to the client side along with whether the detection was passed or failed. In the video, the target recognition area frame turns blue when a card is successfully detected or turns red when a card is not detected. And on the bottom right corner, you can see the image of the card sent from the card detector. Second, we also added the card angle recognition feature. As you can see in the screen on the very left, in the case of the external SDK where an ID card has to be placed beneath the face, the instruction is not clear for the applicant, so in many cases the thickness of the ID was not photographed or a video showing only the front side of the ID was submitted. In order to solve this issue, we took a new approach when it came to the step of taking a photograph of the side of the ID to determine its thickness. We changed the process in this step so that when the applicant tilts their ID to take a photo, the card detector SDK would be used to detect the angle of the ID, and the photo will be taken so a photograph that can be used to determine the thickness of the ID would be submitted. We also applied a method so that the photograph would be taken automatically only when the angle detected by the card detector SDK falls within the range present preset by the administrator in charge of the screening process, we thereby reflected the request from the administrator. 
I will also provide an additional explanation about the card angle detector as we uh, view a sample from the card detector SDK at motion. The client side sends the image of the screen and the frame of the target detection area to the card angle detector in the SDK. The card angle detector analyzes the series of images in the target frame to detect the angle and passes the detected angle and the image at the point of detection to the client side. In the video, you can see that when an angle is detected, the background of the target detection area frame turns blue and red when it's not detected. And on the top right corner, you can see that angle information passed on from the card angle detector. Third, by utilizing Face SDK and Clova Face, we enhance the face recognition feature. The external SDK we had was already providing a face recognition feature with a good level of accuracy, but the structure of the SDK did not allow the verified information to be used in another step uh, or by another server. So by using face SDK, which detects information about a face and its contours from a photograph, the client would use this information in the step where the detected face needs to be verified and using the image uploaded from the client, the image would be verified through Clover face in the server, thereby increasing the accuracy of face detection and verification. Let me show you a sample of the app motion of the face SDK used for face recognition. When the image in the screen is passed to the face detector in the SDK, the area recognized as being a part of the face is delivered in rectangular form and contour information, uh, including the information about the eyebrows and jawline are delivered in point form and also closing of eyes, tilting of head, rotating of the head and such motion related information are also detected. And faces are compared to determine if they are of the same person, and the determined level of similarity is passed on to the client side. Lastly, we specify the guideline and error messages. By displaying guideline pages before and after an applicant has to, has to do a mission, we enabled applicants to do a self-check of the accuracy of their action. And when an error occurs, by immediately displaying a detailed error message, we help the applicants to fix the error right away and retry a mission to complete the process. There are more details about the Clova technologies that we use online Clova's official website under the EKYC tab. Then how did the result of the screening process change after these improvements were made? Comparing the average in May and the average in September, the approval rate increased by 26%. The exact numbers are confidential, so I would like to ask you for your understanding that I can only provide only how much the rate has changed. But the number that you just saw was not achieved as soon as implement, we implemented the EKYC using Line Clover. As you can see in this graph in June, the approval rate actually fell slightly. So we looked into why the applications were rejected to find out why the approval rate came out differently from what we expected. The reason for rejection fell largely into three categories. The ID images were not fully captured. The ID images were blurred. The thickness of the ID card image was not detectable from the side photograph of the ID. We wondered why this happened even when we used the card detector SDK. We realized that images of the card detected by the card detector SDK fit too tightly on the detection frame that the image was uploaded with images of some of the fields lost. For instance, in the picture you see on the right, you can see that the par part of the top left area of the ID card is lost. In order to solve this issue, we applied two solutions. First, we provided a guide image on the screen to encourage the applicants to adjust the location of their ID cards. And second, originally the image of the card detected by the card detector was uploaded to the server in the original format, but we expanded the area of the ID card image by uploading the image at the time the card was detected in the target detection area. After applying the two solutions, we re-release the service, and as a result, the approval rate increased by 13.2% compared to the first month of implementation and 12.3% higher compared to May when external SDK was used. Next, we looked into the problem where the ID images were blurred. 
We guess that this problem occurred because the Clover SDK detected the image of the card and the face before the camera could find focus and blurry images was uploaded to the server. In order to solve this problem, we changed the settings so that Clover SDK would start detecting after a period of time has passed after the camera had completed initializing. And when the target image is blurry, the tar card detector SDK would consider it as an error as an error message, and an error message would be displayed accordingly so that the applicant can retry the mission. Last problem occurred when the side of the ID card what had to be photographed, but the front side was photographed, or the side was photographed, but because the right and the left fields were cropped, when the image is uploaded, so the ID thickness could not be checked. To solve this problem, we added an anim animation where the frame would blink to notify the user that the angle is being automatically detected. There was a notification message near the shutter button, but the animation informed the users more intuitively. Furthermore, after angle detection, we expanded the left and right fields of the image for uploading to the server and by adding a self-check list at the bottom, we changed the UI for an easier check. In this way, after multiple analysis and corrections, we confirmed a gradual increase in the approval rate. And last September, as I have mentioned before, we got a very encouraging result where the approval rate increased by 26% compared to May when an external SDK was used. Not stopping here, we plan to work harder to further increase the approval rate of the EKYC. First, aside from reviewing the uploaded images, we are going to analyze the quantifiable data that we collect in the process the image is taken. This means that we will have to analyze the data and find the similarities in the users whose applications are rejected. Next, we hope to reduce the errors when the users are entering their personal information. Using the Clova OCR technology that I've mentioned before, by automatically filling in the information that can be detected in the user's ID card, we are making things more convenient for the users. So we are finding ways to enhance the accuracy of OCR and trying to find ways to minimize user mistakes in the fields that are not automatically filled. Lastly, we hope to enhance the accuracy of anti-spoofing for face recognition. Spoofing, which is an attempt to carry out face recognition using an illegally acquired photograph or a video of an individual, is a problem for most of the face recognition systems. And because the spoofing technology is advancing, anti-spoofing is becoming more and more important. In case of the current EKYC through a separate screening process, whether something is spoofing or not is manually determined, but we believe that we'll be able to save a lot of time in screening if the spoofed images are filtered out during the application process or if a spoofing probability was provided as a reference for the screening process. We have additionally we have additional plans for the KYC platform also established. First, by adding the JPKI, which uses automatically automatic signature registered in my number card in Japan to the KYC process, we hope to aim to provide a simple and secure method for self-identification and also hope to apply the response of Japanese administrative services. Next, facing the age of post-COVID-19, a lot of areas including services from the private and public sectors need the KYC function. We are preparing a line ID passport system, which enables the use of LimePay's EKYC system as a platform. We hope this will not only provide more convenience to the users, but also take us a step further into an administrative service based on a cashless transactions. Through this presentation, I shared how the KYC is carried out in Line Pay and shared our future plans. We will continue to work hard to provide a better KYC service, so we hope many of you will continue to look forward to what we have in store. It was a pleasure meeting you all, even if it's just in form of video. I hope you enjoy the remaining session in Line Developers Day. Thank you for watching.